Perfect. No, I like that. He needs his I don't see them yet, are we? Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> we are live. Okay. Good morning and welcome to St. Mark's, Richmond, Texas. A uh, uh, special welcome to those who are worshiping with us online today. We have a few announcements before we get started. Um, today is the day that all the gifts are due for the giving tree. So uh, I know there's a huge amount of gifts out there. If you're running late, if it hasn't come in the mail to you or haven't gone to church yet, can you please let Rhonda know because we're going to take them all to the Rainbow Room tomorrow. Um, just in case there's something we're, st we're still waiting on. We figure out how to solve that little thing. Um, next week, um, we are uh, going to right. Next week, we're going to uh, make use of our hour between the services as well as time after the service, second service, to have a wonderful special reception for everybody to gather and fellowship and to talk. So please come early and or stay late. And uh, we're going to have special food set up in the parish hall just to have time to visit before, um, you know, we move into the Christmas season. Next Sunday is also the absolutely glorious and wonderful uh, uh, service of Lesson and Carols that Tom has written and will be performed for us, led for us, um, and it will be at the 10 o'clock service. We'll still have a small 8 o'clock outside for those who really want to just do that 8 o'clock service. So we still won't have that for those who really would prefer that. Um, we have this whole coming week to go ahead, if you would like, to give money to Episcopal Relief and Development in honor of or in memory of someone or give money for poinsettias as well. But we need to get those bulletins together. So. This is the week to take care of that. Um, and we also have a wonderful extra announcement about something special that's going to be happening Christmas Eve. And that is at 7.30 p.m. on Christmas Eve, Dominique McCormick, who has often been our soloist or our singing with our choir here, uh, who is an accomplished uh, soprano, will be singing and Tom will be accompanying her. It will be a lovely Christmas concert. So it's the perfect opportunity to come to the six o'clock service and stay, stay, and then just relax and enjoy the beautiful music that we will be uh, able to enjoy that night. Um, let's see. And I believe that is our announcement. Thank you. Let us worship God together.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. we are sorely hindered by our sins. Let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. <coughs> The first lesson for today is from the prophet Zephaniah, and it will be loud. <clears throat> Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgment against you. He has turned away the threatening. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you with love. He will exult over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time. And I will save the lame and gather the outcasts and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home, at the time when I gather you. For I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth, when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The canticle for day will be received together by half verse, except for the last verse, which you'll notice is the benediction. Let's do that one together, whole. So half verse for all but the last. <clears throat> Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not, not be afraid. afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense. And he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing. From the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the people. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy. For the great one in the midst of the people is the Holy One of Israel. Glory, Glory to the, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And the second reading for today is from Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, that your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What then should we do? In reply, he said to them, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And we, what should we do? He said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. 
He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. <clears throat> God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my Savior. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This is the third Sunday in Advent. This is the Sunday that we finally lit the pink candle, the rose candle that's back here on our um, Advent candle wreath. And it is a shift from the penitential purple to this lighter rose tone to remind us that Advent is not entirely a penitential season, but one filled with joy and anticipation. In our readings today, we have the word rejoice five different times. This past week, we celebrated the birthday of St. Nicholas, a humble man who, according to tradition, always worked for the causes of children and whose holiday in Scandinavian countries has morphed into uh, the Santa Claus that we know in the United States. I want to take a moment to criticize a popular song that works what St. Nicholas's life was really about. And it is the song with the words, you better watch out, you better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good. So be good, for goodness sake. The whole premise of the song is, be good or you'll be on the naughty list and not get any toys. So be good or else. And what about John the Baptist's message? Is it any different? The crowds that come to see John the Baptist are filled with curiosity, with anticipation. Perhaps they're not so sure whether to be afraid of judgment or hopeful for the Messiah. But as we look at John's words today, I want to make one thing clear from the outset. As compelling as John the Baptist is, he is not Jesus. If we were to take only what John says for the core of our faith, we are under judgment and we better get our act together. What he says to the people who come out to him in the wild places is true. It is compelling. But, and, and, and he does get them thinking about their behavior. What should we do is the question that John the Baptist is asked again and again in today's gospel. It is a wonderful question for a variety of reasons. Those asking the question realize they have a problem and they want to do something about it. They're open for some advice. They're open for some guidance. They've come for a baptism of repentance, a cleansing, a purification. Now, this is not like the cleanse that's popular in some diets that purges the body of toxins. This is a spiritual cleansing that John the Baptist offers. And here they are, crowds of people seeing John, and what does he call them? He calls them a brood of vipers. That is, a batch of baby poisonous snakes. Now believe me, this is not a nice thing at all, especially because in ancient times it was popularly believed that baby vipers were so impatient to be born that they fought and fought to be born, and they chewed their way out of their mother, killing her. So a brood of vipers is, is quite an impatient, heartless, dangerous image. The crowd who have come to listen to John 
have reached a point in their lives in which they want, they need a change. The whole crowd is full of expectation. And John the Baptist tells them about impending judgment. When he says, the ax is at the foot of the trees, he's saying, don't rest on your laurels. Don't trust in your family line, your lineage as Israelites. Because God saved your ancestors, that is not enough. So when they ask, what shall we do? What must we do? He has practical answers for them. If you have more than you need, share. <coughs> Don't cheat people. Be honest in your dealing. Don't use your influence to threaten or manipulate. Don't be a bully. This is practical advice. And it's relevant now for people. It points out how humans can twist what are the blessings in their lives. Blessed with plenty to hoard it. Blessed with a position of trust and influence to misuse it and betray that trust. Blessed with power and influence to use it wrongly and lean on others and manipulate them. Now, these three bits of advice are representative ones for this whole crowd of people, multiple crowds of people, who are looking, hoping for more out of life than how they were living it. The people ask, could he be the Messiah? After all, he's telling us how to fix our lives. But John clarifies and he says, no, I'm not the Messiah. One greater than me is coming and I am not worthy to tie his shoes. Now, I am deeply relieved that John is not the Messiah. Because John's message, while compelling and so terribly important, it leaves us at judgment and the threat of God's impending destruction. And this world of ours has not changed a whole lot. Is that all we have before us if we don't straighten up? We can so easily get stuck at morality as the core of our Christian faith, stuck at behavior and failures, stuck at an inability to feel forgiven, or if we're really stuck with just morality as our core, unable to forgive. Stuck thinking that God's love for us is contingent on our behavior. We only get presents if we're good. That is why, that is where we stay stuck if all we have is John the Baptist's message. John's message is incomplete. We have Jesus always coming into our lives and the core of our faith that God is rooted in God's graceful, forgiving love for us. That while we were unworthy and in sin, God's Son has come to save us. Now the very best way John has to describe how different this one who is coming will be, he says, he will baptize with spirit and fire, not just water. John also says, he comes with a winnowing fork in hand, and a winnowing fork is a tool to clean grain using the wind. Jesus will sort through the mixed and muddled ways of people's lives as easily as grabbing a basket full of trampled wheat and flinging it all up into the air, letting the wind carry away the chaff and the heavy, ripe wheat berries to fall at his feet. Now, for those of us who follow Jesus, this is not a question where we worry whether we're wheat or we're chaff, but rather that Jesus sees into our hearts, sees our lives, and with a toss into the air as easy as that, he can see in us how we've lived, and the chaff of our life is gone, carried away with the wind. John's message ends at the judgment, at the sorting. We need to remember the reality of Jesus' life and resurrection for all who believe. To be seized by Jesus, to be judged by Jesus, is to experience his grace, his love, in which we are safe. And when we are flung upward into the uncertain winds of God's judgment, Jesus is there to catch us when we fall. And all that is sinful, all that is destructive, has fallen away. We are safe in God's arms. The question, what must we do, is a good one for us to keep alive, but it need not be one that we ask in fear and despair. 
We can live in that space of change and growth, knowing, trusting that Jesus is there to catch us when we fall. Let us seek to remain in that trusting space with God, always falling in some way, and yet always being caught in his arms. There is a prayer that clergy are given at Credo, which is a conference for clergy to reinvigorate their professional and personal lives. And it captures very well how God takes up residence in our lives in four sentences. Holy God, be in my mind that I might let go of all that diminishes the movement of your Holy Spirit within me. Discerning God, be in my eyes that I might see you in the midst of all the busyness that fills my life. Loving God, be in my heart that I can be open to those I love, to those whom I share ministry, and to the whole human family. And gracious God, be in that grace-filled silence that lies deep within me, that I might live in Christ as Christ lives in me. Rejoice, one who is greater than John is coming into the world. Amen. Let us stand as we are able and affirm what we believe. Using the words of the Nicene Creed found in our bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light, 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 true to God, from true God, begotten not made, of one with being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, for, us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate in the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death in the Spirit. On the third day he rose again, and in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again, Lord, to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We want to draw baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We want for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <coughs> the prayers of the people of Form 1 is printed in your bulletin. With all our heart and with all our mind. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Andy, Jeff, Hector and Kay, our bishops, and for all bishops and for all clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, Lord have mercy. For our President Joe, our Governor Greg, and for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For this city, Richmond, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For seasonable weather and for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For those who travel on land, on water, under the water, or in the air or through outer space, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widows and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. 
I'm going to read a list here for those we keep in our hearts and our thoughts and our prayers. But I also know and acknowledge the Lord has placed names on your heart. Please say them together out loud or silent. He hears them both. We pray especially for Griff, for Buddy and Debbie, for Harry, for Eddie, Bill, BT, for Jim, the Hollering family, for Christopher, for Chica, for Keith, for Sally, Lane, for Benno, Dave, Roger, for Dorothy, and for Ed, for Barbara, for Kathy, for Evelyn, for Sue Lane, Stephen, for Monique, Cameron, Joy, Juliet, Hilo, Princess, David, Donna, for Marco, for Mary Moore, for the people of Haiti and Afghanistan for peace and safety, for those suffering from COVID and their family, and for those who've not only lost their lives, but in fact lost their livelihoods, suffering from the ravages of the weather in Kentucky and parts of Tennessee and Georgia and for those for whom the daughters of the king pray. Ronnie, Joe, Dan, Joyce, Ashley, Daniel, Amy, Dee, and Charlie and Hosanna. And Rachel. For the people of Ukraine. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy that we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Defend us, deliver us, and in thy compassion protect us, O Lord, by thy grace. Lord, Lord have mercy. To the communion of St. Mark and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another in all our life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord, our God. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most, Most merciful God, God we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways for the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. birthday that I'm aware of this week and that is Vince. So let us pray for Vince on his birthday week. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor we pray on your servant Vince as he begins another year. 
Grant that he may continue to grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen his trust in your goodness all the days of his life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm unaware of any anniversary. Um, we continue to pray for those who are absent from us during this time of extended pandemic. And uh, we love them, we miss them, and we want to pray for them. So let us pray. O oh God, whose fatherly care reaches to the uttermost parts of the earth, we humbly beseech you graciously to behold and bless those whom we love now absent from us. Defend them from all dangers of soul and body and grant that both they and we, drawing nearer to you, may be bound together by your love in the communion of your Holy Spirit and in the fellowship of your saints. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and offered himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
without shame or fear, rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, <coughs> who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. supper he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said drink this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins whenever you drink it do this for the remembrance of me therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith Christ, Christ is died Christ, Christ is risen, risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us all so that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, and with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. 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 And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us be priest. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith. Mm -hmm. 
with thanksgiving.
eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant them strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. Amen.
Yeah. Wow. 